Marine connectivity is the study of dispersal in marine organisms. But be careful, we're not talking about seasonal migrations like those of whales or other large marine mammals. Today we are talking about a definitive one-time migration between parents and offspring. In many marine organisms, this migration happens in the plankton during a microscopic larval phase before metamorphosis. For example, mussels live attached to rocks but release their eggs and sperm into the water. After fertilization, there will be millions of larvae, each less than one-tenth of a millimeter. These larvae will live for one to two months in the plankton and disperse away from their birthplace. When they attach to a rock to live as adults, they will be less than one millimeter long, 100 times smaller than an adult mussel. This size difference between adults and offspring is very common in marine species. It is therefore impossible to follow the dispersal of the larvae directly in the water. They are invisible. To trace the movements of these microscopic organisms in the huge ocean, there are several different approaches. We will consider the most important three here, oceanographic modeling, chemical analysis, and genetic analysis. Oceanographic modeling is the analysis of physical models of ocean currents. Based on the topography of the ocean floor, currents, winds, atmospheric pressures, and temperatures, we create a model of physical circulation which, when combined with behavioral parameters, allows us to predict the movements of a particle in a mass of water. These models are becoming more precise thanks to increasing computational strength and to the development of new, higher performance models. Thanks to chemical analysis, we can also determine the position of individuals of a species at different stages of their life cycle. For this, we study the inner ear of fish, or the shell of mollusks, which begin calcification during the larval stage. Like the rings of a tree, we analyze the chemical composition of microsamples from the center to the exterior. These correspond to different stages of life, birth, the start and end of the larval period, and the juvenile period at the time of sampling. We can therefore obtain the position of individuals through time by comparing them to data of the environmental composition of the ocean and retrace their migrations. Lastly, the genetic method relies on the analysis of relationships among individuals. A first approach looks for direct links between parents and offspring and the distance that separates them. In marine species, it is very tedious. A huge number of juveniles and potential parents must be analyzed to find only a tiny proportion of related individuals. Recent progress in high-throughput DNA sequencing now allows us to analyze a large number of individuals at low cost, and if this method were applied in routine, it would allow us to gain information not only on connectivity, but also on the size of fish stocks. The genetic method is also very efficient and provides complementary information to estimate long-term connectivity averaged over many generations by using much more distant relatives. We call this genetic connectivity. There are many reasons to do these studies. For one thing, a greater understanding of the marine world, and for another, an ecological and economic interest to preserve biodiversity and better manage marine resources. A marine protected area is a zone found near the coast or in the open ocean in which human activities are regulated according to the ecological challenges at hand. Managing MPAs in an effective and rational manner requires a deep knowledge of the movements of populations, zones of reproduction, and connections that exist between these populations. It is necessary to adjust the size of MPAs and their spacing along the coast. Thanks to progress made during recent years in the three approaches presented here, we are beginning to understand these phenomena much more rapidly and precisely so that we can better define zones of activity and fishing quotas and prevent eventual species extinctions. The objective at hand is to better manage marine resources so that we can move towards a sustainable development of the oceans.